Well, 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 welcome back to part three of this here daily number 605 where Solki is just the winningest. Oh, he's so good. Oh, Solki also, he's a very personable fellow. Apollo and I giggled and chortled our American and British hearts out alongside him with Chobra doing a little bit of translate and action for the WCS season one grand final. That sentence was impossible to say. Solki is cool, is all I had to say. I don't know why I decided to throw all those words in. I'm not Charles Dickens. I don't get commentary bucks by the word, but that's fine. He's good. Let me just go into the game. We wound up in this position after seeing all the great transition in part one and two. And now it's time to see uh, the sort of conclusion of this game. We see, oh yeah, look, there's not as many spines. We are seeing the defensive capabilities of the Infestors kick in a little bit. We're seeing more spines at our more vulnerable locations, the ones that it's harder to get to. A single hallucinatory phoenix. Hive underway. Armor and Krapis. Swarmos. Gonna be very, very helpful. Just blasting through mid. Link counterattacks, so far so good, but we're seeing this Muta Corruptor Ball not really taking daring maneuvers into the main base. Being a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more defensive, because this map is just very hard to attack on. If you had overcommit to an attack, you'd leave yourself quite vulnerable. So here comes a kind of funny, awkward phase. You can't build that many Swarm Hosts because you have 25 flying units. We also don't want to sack the 25 flying units because they're pretty important in terms of your defense. So, what we're going to see out of Soul Key is a very slow, methodical transition into Swarm Host play by trickling in defensive structures here and there, just oozing them in. Oozy ooze. Because, again, if we're a solid five base player, it doesn't matter if we lose our sixth base. We're going to be fine. Oh, we're gonna be just fine. Remember the remember them swarm hosts was talking about? Remember that they're swarm hosts? Well, they're mighty good. And only once this defense is set up very nicely with lots of swarm hosts. Does it appear that Sulky feels comfortable moving out into this main base, getting into some engagements? Oh no, we lost Mutilus. Whatever will we do with our makeup 20 supply? I will give you three guesses. But no more. No more than three. You're only going to get three guesses. Oh, yeah, that's right. Infestors and Swarm Hosts. Good! Good. Those were two of your guesses. You got to be right twice. Not panning out well for Soul Key. Or, excuse me, I meant to say SOS. It's panning out friggin' amazingly for Soul Key. And now look at that! With the Mutalisks dead, we have the money mix. Swarm host, corruptor, and fester, and plenty of defensive structures to boot. The strats du jour rallying through mid. A style that is distinctly unzergy, yet extremely effective. However, I'm much more content with this because it had a very zergy looking opening. We have Mash expanded. You dig it? Because I dig it. These Locusts actually are not even upgraded. They're still just doing their their base damage of 12. <laughs> and Sulky moves in for a nice, secure lockdown on this base. It's not time to, like, sprint and eagerly run in there and try to end the game. But, you know, slowly doing this sort of stuff. Working the way up. Oh, it's clear. Now maybe I can move up. Yeah. Yes. And that is going to be that, I believe. I think it will be. Solid play. Start to finish. Oh, by the way, Corruptors with Overseers? So nasty. Because all the Observers are dying. Look, this game's over. SOS just takes forever to die. He's really hard to kill. He's... He's like the bosses in my roommate's D&D campaign. I don't know why he makes the boss fights take that long, but it's like an hour and a half to three hours per normal fight, not even like a final boss. And there's not even minions, it's just one guy. And you're like, all right, hit him again. And you just like, roll your dice. It's like, all right, you did a critical. 
All right, do it again. All right, he's... All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some coffee because I know this is gonna be a big battle. Yeah, that's... Anyone else ever have a DM like that? I wasn't even participating. I was just watching. I would, like, go out and I would, like, start cooking a turkey, which would, like... I mean, like, I started a cookie or a turkey last year. It's, like, still not done. But I would, like, literally go out there and I'd begin, like, marinating and, like, doing all that stuff. And they would, like, start the boss fight. I would come back in and check the thermometer and be, like, still in the boss fight. It was terrible. That's a tangent. Look, SOS isn't leaving the game. I swear to God, Soul Key wins that. Just believe me. So this now brings me to the final game that I want to take a look at. This is going to be that very first game that we saw that was a loss for Soul Key. Uh, it's going to be on Whirlwind. We're going to see some similar techniques. This is a four-player map, so we're going to see things not quite pan out so nicely. We still know what our timings are. We still know exactly what we want to do. Very fortunately, Soul Key Stet sends out his first scout in the proper direction. Overlord 2, you sort of amortize that risk by sending it out. Uh, you send it out at an angle for two reasons. One, to spot if there's any rush coming in. And there's the spotter. You know, cannon rushes, this sort of thing. But also, so if it turns out there's no one there, you can often get this overlord to steer down from here and begin going down to that place. But you'll also notice this overlord is rallied right to where the wall off could be. This overlord rallied right to where the wall off could be. Ah, it's a wall off. Sulky chills. So Sulky's doing a different opening on this map. He's going for Hatch, Gas, Poo. Immediately reroutes this Overlord. Emergency procedures. Get it over. What was the first thing we were talking so much about against these early Expand as well? Let's get two Lings up to pick off that nasty, annoying, jerk-faced douchebag probe that will try to ruin our life. Subsequently, that six-minute mark seems like a mighty fine time to do some scouting. Get him! Pick him off! Probes are going to be chilling at the front. So here we are, parking at 5.36 minutes. I really kind of want to know what's up by 6 minutes. There's a Stargate right there, but Sulky doesn't know that. Still hasn't found out what's up. 6 minutes. Going to start to get suspicious. Going to start to get real suspicious. And begins to try to poke in there. See that just poked in there a little bit? Oh, okay. Things that can arise suspicion here. Oh, wow, There's the forge isn't doing anything. But, you know, we did see this assimilator go down before six minutes. So that's actually quite helpful. All these are little bits of information that you're trying to get a really simple read. Is he going to attack me fast with ground units? Or not? So Overlord, now that it has identified the tech, it's going to pull back and begin doing a responsible job spotting the third, because that's the next timing that we wanted. Now, Soul Key is going into this double Evo Chamber mass lane style. Overlord's still going in there to really just get a final sense of what the heck is going on. I'd prefer this Overlord to maybe steer over there, because the Zerglings can sort of, you know, accomplish the remainder of the info gathering. <sighs> Ooh, oh man, so, I mean, now that we're at 8 minutes, we can just do some simple math. How many Void Rays can he possibly have? One, and no more. This finished at 6.30, Phoenix comes out at 7. So, two Void Rays cannot be out by 8. Nice. But what else are we checking for at 8? Whether or not this third base is going to be coming up. Already we see the 1-1 upgrades en route. Already our layer is done. Already the infestation pit pops up. But a couple things start to go real wrong. Infestation pit is the choice for Soul Key. And this is one of the reasons why players really have been struggling. Okay, great. We've identified that he's going for this Stargate expand style. So we can begin expanding like crazy. There's no question of that. This is one of these simple little adjustments that is it's a simple adjustment but it's a significant uh, effect what is what are we seeing soul key do right now he seems to be going straight to infester and in fact I'll tell you right now he's going to infester it's really easy to look at this and to think something like oh 
Oh, well, I mean, Soul Key, he's doing something completely different. He's doing a wildly drastic, different change to what's going on compared to the last two games. But try to create relationships between these two. What did we see in that first game? Or in the first two games? When he saw this air expand, he began to expand, or Soul Key expanded a lot. In the mid game, he went mutas into corruptors to force a certain composition. He then went infester spine crawler and then wrapped up with some other late transition, whether it be ultras or swarm host. So in this sense, he's just skipping over the mutalisk phase. He's going mass expand, skip past the mutalisk, go straight to infester, and then into a late game transition. So now we're thinking okay, that means that I'm accepting attacks earlier on. I'm not going to be forcing him to go for a lot of Phoenix. Okay, cool. This is this is just snipping out a segment of the gameplay. So. Oh, VODs. Thank you, guys. I do need to post a link to these VODs of these finals casts. So, yeah, look at that. There's the hatch going down. Zergling's trying to do some spotting. What were some significant things that we saw happen in that last game? Wow, there's actually no additional queens here. Wait, there's actually no overlord out here, no spotter. We're at the 10 minute mark, we'd kind of like to get that scout in. We'd actually really like to get that scout in. We're very fortunate in that we can put speedlings up here. We even see these void rays moving up and soul key. It's a very, very simple, painful blunder. Spore Crawler doesn't move down. Not enough queens to bridge this gap. Still at just three. Well, after the 10 minute mark, beginning to get in there to do that scout, but it's a little too late. Because coming on up into the main, coming on up into the main, Coming on up to the main. Where is it? Oh wait, it doesn't even happen yet. Never mind. Whoops. That's embarrassing. Yeah, it continued expands. I think Soul Key is in good position, save for the lack of control of this airspace right here. This spore crawler should be out one. Soul Key has now begun to transition all the way up into Ultra Ling. He has infestors, but he'll definitely be going ultra soon. And then this happens, and this was this was the sort of mistake that you're just like, ah, ah, and you just want to like rip your face off and you just, you cry and you sob. However, if we back up just 10 seconds, we look at this, this is actually great. We're getting this hatch up. You know, if we can just lock this guy out of these bases, I remember what happened in game one. My opponent isn't going to have a good composition to deal with a big ultra ling force. And especially I'm going to have a lot of infestors. Yeah, by skipping over that, um, by skipping over the mutilus corruptor phase, we're a little bit more vulnerable for, against Void Rays. But that doesn't mean that any of the other segments are still true. And this is something that's, again, very, very key about the way that we're seeing Soul Key play in all these games. So there's a pattern to them. We're seeing that even in this game where there was no mass mutilus corruptor play, we're going Ling. Skipping over Mutalus, then going into this Infester defense phase, and then into our late game plan. Mutalus effectively just extended that out tremendously. So unfortunately for Soul Key, uh, this happens, and then he's just, uh, uh. I think kind of a late backup by Soul Key to be like, you know what, no, 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 let's just go Mutus. Okay, I promise. <laughs> I promise I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I honestly still think that Soul Key probably could have been able to recover from this if he just built a whole bunch of spines and went Infester. And that is not just a random burbling thought, like, Bah, if you had uh, defense, then yeah, it would have been done. It's just saying, okay, well now that we're going into this Mutalisk phase, what was the follow-up phase? Infester, spine crawler. Everything's been super messed up because we didn't do the Mutalisk harass, so let's just dump into this third phase of our plan a little more aggressively. So we can just see a little bit of disorganization from Soul Key. A little bit of lack of spotting here. Um, but overall was still very much so on pace with what he was doing in the other two games. A little bit of an abstract point to end with, but a damn good one.
at the very least. So let's take some questions, and then I'm going to go prep, because the SC2L is tonight. Again, for any of you who do not know what that is, that is the uh, new Western Team League. Um, there will be a broadcast studio up in San Francisco, where they'll be broadcast out of. I'm going to be remoted in tonight to cast with Jeffrey in control Robinson. We're going to be doing Root Gaming versus Team Liquid. That will be beginning in 30 minutes. If you're watching on the archives, you can just go to youtube.com slash day9tv and you'll see all the videos there. Um, oops, I opened up the wrong thing. If any of you would like to know, let me actually just navigate over to... This is my website. This is day9tv. If you just click on... Uh, SC2L Week 1, you can see the matchups that'll be happening. Masa vs. Snoot, Kane Hero, Yu-Gi-Oh! Xenio, Theognis Rhett, Yu-Gi-Oh! Teja, and Sage TLO. Um, I think there's a reason why Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, will play twice, but uh, I'm not going to lie. I didn't even catch that until I was on air right now, so I'll be learning the rules in the next 30 minutes. Look, when I'm live with my cast, I'm going to be nailing it in SC2L. But since this is the daily, you get to see me in my vulnerable weak state. Uh, uh. So let me just go ahead and turn subscribers off. And let's ta uh, take some questions. And let's make sure that they're focused on the ZVP thing. Because very often people are like, God, Hellbats! What do you think about them? It's like, well, I think it's a Zerg versus Protoss. Where it's awfully hard. Awfully hard to get those Hellbats out. Um, so... M E M N Giant Gnome says Day Nine Soul Key chose a relatively passive strategy up until the thirteen plus minute mark wasn't really attacking. Would a Hydra Ling attack into a Swarm Host Corruptor timing work as a more aggressive strategy? Um, um, there's actually a twelve minute attack timing that's. Um, I mean, thirteen minutes is actually pretty damn aggressive. I mean, if you consider the fact that he's going. Five bases into Mass Mutalisk, you know, hitting it 13 minutes, that's actually stupid fast. That's like really, really fast. Um, the fastest other timing push that I know of that's like okay is you open Hydras to defend and then very quickly throw down Swarm Host. So you do a Ling Hydra Swarm Host push and that hits at like 11 and a half or 12. The earliest other three base push that just will suck ass against this is the Stefano Maxling Roach at 11 minute thing, because you just get killed. You just die. So, I mean, I, I think that I would just say that if you do this, what Soul Key's doing, you will not feel like you're being passive. You'll feel like <gasps> panicked. Um. Four one six three six five four one six C asks day nine. What if SLS added Tempest to the Phoenixes to help against the Corruptor Muta? Um, two things would happen. One, the Corruptor Muta might not be able to deal as much damage. He'll still be able to do some significant damage because Tempests are slow to add in. Um, but most importantly of all, Zerg would be like, sweet, Tempest, I'm going to expand two more times, because your army's even slower. <laughs> do all those weird faces and shit. Ugh, it's creepy. And then uh, soon enough, you, the Protoss, would not be able to get as much many expansions, and it would be like eight base Zerg with 16 gases against your paltry three, three to four bases. So you'd get overrun. You would get overrun. Yes. Um, Jiva Viri asks, what's the easiest way to get Hellbats in Protoss versus Zerg? A hack is the easiest way to do it. You heard it here, Day9 TV endorse hacking to get Hellbats in non-Terran matchups. <laughs> Threxor says, in the last game you jumped straight to Infestors. What was the trigger for that decision? Um, I think it's kind of a style thing that you would say something like, okay, I'm going to get plus one, plus one upgrades for my Zerglings. This will delay my mass expanding. So I don't think my Mutalists are going to work as effectively because I can't mass them. So I'm going to get the Infestors up to be good. Um, but, I mean, I, I still think Sulky could have defended that if he just built some extra Queens. I think it was close. But I think it is a stylistic choice. It's the claim, I'm going to win this game with 3-3 three, three Ling Ultra that's beating your upgrades. Well, let's go ahead and take one more. So, Iota up 
SB says day nine. So my brother, a Protoss player, has mentioned that mass gateway units along with Storm can deal with Mutas equally well as Phoenix if controlled correctly. This is true. What kind of response would this elicit from the Zerg? Also, the you, he sp <laughs> spelled it illicit as I L L I C I T, but that's like in like an illicit substance. Um, illicit to like draw out is E L I C I T. I just thought it's like. What sort of response would this elicit from the Zerg? Like, illicit contraband. So good. Um, and if, and it, by the way, if that, if that definition is wrong, then, you know, happy birthday, kitty for cats. You know, happiest birthday to you. How many times do I drop my pen in the daily? Several. Several. Hundred. I'm not answering the question. What about gateway units first, this? Um, it's hard as hell. The nice thing about Phoenix is that they can be both defensive and aggressive. You can sort of fold back and pick the Mutalists off, and then if the Mutalists start to run away, you can chase them down and pick them off more. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it works so... It's hard because you don't get to select engagements as a gateway uniting player. And I think that good mutilisking players will be very comfortable against a big gateway style. The way that gateway units... Um, how do I want to answer this question? Okay. First of all, advantages of Phoenix. We can chase down mutilists and pick them off, which means we can choose engagements. We can defend and be aggressive at the same time. Um, so if you know our opponent is going mass mutilus and we pick them all off, then Zerg's in real, real tough shape because he can't just like start building hydras. He's in a position where he's going to have almost no defense for a good minute or two. So you can just kill off all his stuff with the phoenixes. But let's talk about gateway units. If you're playing defensively and passively with gateway units, Zerg is just going to out expand you like crazy and just avoid any good engagements. You have to be very aggressive with the gateway units forcing the Mutalists to be back and defensive, and forcing the Mutalists to want to fly into those storms. And the best reason to motivate the Zerg to do that is that you're killing one of his key hatches or something like that. Um, that's about it. Um, so thank you so much for tuning into today's daily. Apologies for the crash in game number two. Um, in uh, 30 minutes, the SC2L week one will be live here. Root Gaming versus Team Liquid. The format is going to be best of seven. Each is a one-on-one. -on -one. Usual pro league format where the first six round matches or the first uh, six rounds are fixed and the seventh one is the ace match. Whomever plays or who, or if you get to the ace match you can send it whomever you want. So I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Hope to see you tomorrow at Firefall Fest. There will be no daily tomorrow. I'll be uh, hanging out at Firefall Fest. Me and Sir Scoots are going to be playing um together. And Man vs. Game is also going to be their same day. Ooh, who doesn't love Mr. Jason? Show's done. See you in 30.